Good afternoon, everybody. I just got done trying to do a video and I looked up and I realized how long it was. I went, okay, we're going to do two different videos because part of my video uh, is meant for today because it's basically on the Bible. And the other part was I answered some of this question and went down a rabbit hole. So let's get to the first part. The first part was about the Bible and I pulled... I pulled something out of my notes that I have not looked at in a while. And I went, ooh, this might be good. It is what I called or labeled the four G's of the Bible. Now, you're probably wondering, four G's of the Bible? The Bible doesn't have four different books with a G name. No. They're not books in the Bible. These are things out of the Bible. The first one is glorify God. It's from 1 Corinthians 10.31. And it says, So whether you eat, drink, or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. I'm going to pause there before I get to the other G's. Just to talk about what that means to me. Everything we do. Every breath we take. Every thought we think, every word that comes out of our mouth, every deed that we do, everything that we do, no matter what it is, should be meant to glorify the kingdom of God. Unfortunately, and I'm guilty of this, in fact, I think every single one of us is guilty of not fully glorifying the kingdom of heaven every day we live now i know at nighttime we can't fully control our thoughts and whatnot because it's part of our you know whatever's going on while we're sleeping is part of our subconscious but think of it this way every breath we take is not a gift from not just a gift from god but it's also glorifying god because he's the one that gave us that ability okay our deeds. Do we, on a regular basis, go out of our way to help another human being when you see that they look like they're struggling? And you don't have to just go up to them and go, here, let me get it for you. And No. Go up them politely and go, I see you're struggling. Is there anything I can help you with? It, can I help you get the whatever it is they're struggling into the vehicle or to at least the doorstep of their home? Whatever. You know, a lot of times, like this morning, I had to go to Aldi's. Excuse me. I went to Aldi's to get some items that we need, some of it's for dinner for tonight. Oh, I hope we have egg noodles. I hope we have egg noodles because of the casserole. Um, but a lot of times when I, when I go to Aldi, um, especially first thing in the morning like today, I'm usually the first one using a cart. And those cart at all these, you have to put a quarter in there so you can release the mechanism so you can use a cart. It's one of their many ways of keeping carts from being stolen or wandered. Sorry. Um, a lot of times, if I know I've got extra quarters or, or whatnot, I will leave the quarter in the cart and just put the cart in place without, you know, Grabbing that other chain or whatnot to push it into the machine to pop out the quarter. No, I'll just leave it. I don't know how many times this happened to, for me. I'm like, oh, wow. Somebody didn't want their quarterback, you know, pay it forward. I think that right there is, is just one of the many different things that, per, you know, we can do to glorify God. Is Oh, I'm done shopping all these. Do I want to take the quarter or not? No, nah, you know, let's just leave it for the next person. Because the next person might have forgotten to get a quarter. Or might not have pocket change to get a quarter out of their pocket. We don't know. To me, that's one of many different ways of glorifying God. Another way I glorify God. When I work, I go in there and I work my hardest. I put my whole heart and my whole being into my job. And then I turn around and I serve people without you know, anger or negative thoughts. or That, to me, is a way of serving God. Because you're serving food 
to college kids that need the nourishment and whatnot just make it through the day. I mean, I only did a year worth of college at Ozark Christian College here in Joplin, Missouri, which is about a three-hour drive from here. Two and a half to three-hour drive, depending on, on how you're driving or, what the, or what's going on with people around you. But um, that's a service. And since I'm not begrudging my job or anything like that, to me, that's not only a service that needs to be pr provided, but it's also a way of serving God because you're feeding the people. Now, I know I've got a mouth. I mean, I can, I can match swear word to swear word with any Marine Corps person, um, but what's the use of it? None. None. It glorifies nobody. Hatred, anger, glorifies nobody. At least nobody important. Negativity. It, it might be one of the many elements uh, of the universe, but it, it's not a big element and it's not very, it, it's not necessary. You know, yeah, there's negative ions and there's negative particles and da, da, da. you want to get into all the science of negative, you know, black holes and negative energies and whatnot. There's a, there is plenty of it out there. But I think if we stay positive and we try to, if we literally, literally put our best for, foot forward and glorify God every day of the week, every moment of our lives, that will outweigh the negativity in a heartbeat. Next one. Next one I'm not going to read much on because I've read this one I don't know how many times lately, but it doesn't seem to be clicking. And that second G is getting the log out of your eye. Now, we all know that parable. Matthew 7, 3 to 5. Talking about worrying about the, the log in your eye instead of the speck in your brother's eye. It's simple. We all have downfalls of one form or another, whether they're visible or not. Could be downfalls in your physical appearance because of a, a birth defect or abnormality. It could be something to do with your psychological, whether it's constantly being manic depressed or having seizures or, you know, Anything like that. Educational issues. Spe speech issues. Blindness. There's a lot of different things that we don't always see. But they're detectable. And then there are other things that are just are not seen. You know, your emotions. Positive or negative. A lot of people can't see the negative because a lot of people are, hard, are very good at hiding it. But the possibility, the not possible, yeah, the positive energy. Oh man, that's contagious. You could be happy as a clam in mud. You could be, you know, just on cloud nine. And whether you're actually showing how happy you are or acting as you know, acting extremely happy. That stuff is de detectable and contagious. And it's the greatest feeling to, to be right next to somebody who's super happy and super pumped. Because then you become super happy and ready to do whatever needs to be done. It's a contagious thing. Unfortunately, negativity is contagious too, but just not in the right direction. But, I mean, all these people on the on on the... That on the internet, who who are just unhappy with every little thing and want wants to try to draw drag or draw as much attention to themselves and get everybody else that follows them unhappy and negative and whatnot about whatever, whatever. I mean, oh yeah, you sh you should have been there with me, man. This guy cut me off as I was trying to get into a parking spot. And he just drove right around me and. Stole my parking spot. Whatever. 
man, I just got this brand new outfit and I got it outside and it started pouring down rain and it didn't do what it said it was supposed to do and yada, 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 yada. Who cares? So what? You got wet. What did you do that day? What did you think? I mean, what did you think people did way back in the old school days before umbrellas were invented? Especially if you don't live somewhere like Hawaii where you can just cut down a big old palm tr uh, palm tree leaf and carry it over your head like a ring like an umbrella. People down in in Egypt and Saudi Arabia and and the Mediterranean they didn't have umbrellas. People up north like up in Norway and whatnot they didn't have big palm trees. They had to either just stay indoors and hope the roof doesn't start leaking or put on a, a on a decent pair of clothing that's been um, coated with seal blubber or whatever it is they use to keep the moisture out of your clothes. You know, it's life. Learn how to deal with it. I mean, yeah, it's nice to have an umbrella, but you know what? Who cares? It might be like here in the Midwest where we get these rain showers that are hot rain. It's like getting into the shower and turning the spigot onto the warmest possibility without it getting scorching hot. And then walking into a nice building and freezing your took us off because they've got the air conditioner running. It's only downside in my brain. But, you know, I like nature and I like all things nature. So it's like, you know. It's one of those things where it's like, why are you worried about what's going on? What, I mean, why are you worrying about the the, the dust and whatnot in, in your fellow mankind's eyes when you've got the obvious log sticking out of yours? You know, it's a metaphor, but still. You, you know, you're worried about somebody else's negativity or somebody else's sin or somebody else's wrongdoing, which is not your job in the first place. Yet you've got, you've got a, a closet full of skeletons and you're going to worry about the other person. I'd be worried about my, my, you know, the skeletons in my closet before I worry about somebody else. You know, I've got enough of my own here at home to deal with. I don't have the time nor the energy to deal with somebody else's, you know, Opinions or negativity or, or whatever. Next one. This one I love. And I wish a lot of people would take it to heart and, and understand what it means. It's Galatians. I do believe Galatians 6 1. Actually, I'm going to look this up to make sure I'm in the right here with with the um Galatians. I think that's New Testament. Sorry folks, I'm wanting to make sure I've got this right because Yep, okay, Galatians. Six one. Oh, wow, I did not highlight this. This is um, weird. Okay, yeah. I'm going to read the, the, the second verse because I only have it down in six, uh, six one. But after taking a quick glance at this, I, I think the whole verse, or the whole... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> says, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you may be tempted. That's verse 1. Verse 2 is, carry each other's burden, or burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. 
So I want to read those two. So it is two. Uh, the and I can't see my highlighters. But I wanted to read that to you because I, I find nowadays more and more people and it's happened on on my channel already with one person and i had to basically remove them because they were just getting too irate and they not not only were they getting irate with me and my my videos on discussions of the vikings and whatnot but they try they were starting to get irate with somebody who was trying to explain to them and even defend my side of it because um there's no wrong but in this particular person's eyes, they were a lot of wrong. And I must say this much, okay? I can understand, because I've got Mailman who sends me a lot of uh, biblical verses, and I love his way of doing it, whether it's a he or she, I'm, I'm not sure. But I love Mailman's way of sending me or putting in the comments without being, like, vocal He's just copying down um, biblical, ver biblical verses with maybe w one one or two light comments trying to, like, show me more information than what I, I read on my Sunday vlogs. And I love the way he does it because it's just like, here's some more, you know, outlook or uh, here's some more, you know, stuff that you might want to take a look at. And he'll put the the chapter of the verse and and the whole nine yards um book chapter and verse and he'll he'll even put it out of his uh out of, the, out of their bible whether it's um you know the same as mine or different which doesn't matter to me as long as it's out of a bible and you know it you know i'll read it and then i'll cross reference it with my one of my bibles like, if somebody sends me an NIV, I've got an NIV. If somebody sends me a uh, New American Standard, I've got a New American Standard. Then I've got this one over here, which I think is NIV as well. But it's called the Everyday Man, Every, Every Man's Bible. And then somewhere in storage uh, is, and it's in a Bible cover and wrapped up in the whole nine yards, is... The Bible, uh, the uh, I think it's the King James Version from uh, the Good Samaritan uh, group that's uh, basically headed up by Billy Graham. It's part of the Billy Graham Association. And the, um, the crew, basically they were the Good Samaritan crew that came literally up to New York to help New Yorkers after Hurricane Sandy. Um... So they gave us a Bible at the end and prayed with us in the whole nine yards. They prayed with us on a day, practically a daily basis or every time we were there. And I loved that. The thing is, the difference between the person I had to um, kick out of, basically block from from co commenting, she was, go she was going at it in, in, in more of a hardcore, like, You've got to do this. You, you're, you know, all the things that you're reading are wrong. Anything outside the Bible is wrong. Blah, 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 blah. Not even listening to anybody who tried to point out the differences b between what she sees and believes in and what most main, most Christians that I know try to work with. Because most of my, most of the people that I talk to agree with me that all the crystals and rocks and all the stuff uh, from nature is made by God for us to use in a proper manner. Now the problem is 90% of mankind that I can tell, um, and that might be a, an extreme number, but for the most part when I look at the news and the reports and the maps and the mineral information you know information on digging and wells and all that and i'm like oh my god why why we were supposed to be ter caretakers of the planet not people who would destroy the planet but digging these giant freaking strip mines and 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 big old craters and literally 
destroying the planet. Clear cut whole forests and, and strip mine whole states. I mean, I was like, oh my god. If we continue the way we're gonna, we're continuing, we're not going to be living on the surface. We're going to be living underground in these leftover holes and whatnot from the strip mining and all that stuff. And it just, you know, it just boggles my mind. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, I can understand, um, you know, the the downside with the oil drilling or yeah the pipelines and the oil and whatnot is if it spills out of their pipes and whatnot as just plain straight up crude oil um it can kill landscape it can kill animals it, it's just nasty sticky goopy unhealthy stuff now i'd rather see the land dotted with um, solar farm, my, uh, solar farming systems and wind turbine systems and, you know, not big giant holes or, or oil rigs or, you know, stuff like that. I mean, there's way, it, they harnessed wind power way before electricity just to, to grind wheat and, and flour and all that stuff. Um. Europe, especially in Holland and whatnot, they, they still have windmills that are going, I mean, from the old days. They might not be used as, as grain mills, but they're still up and, you know, they dot the landscape and they're beautiful. But that's just me. All right, the next one and last one it is go and be reconciled. Matthew 5.24 and it says, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be recon reconciled, then... Oh, reconciled to them. Then come and offer your gift. I understand that one completely. Because I can think about these things. Now, back when this was written, what they meant was whether your gift was first pickings of crop, first fruit off the tree, um, newborn goat or whatever kind of uh, livestock that they had, goat, cow, sheep, I don't know what all they had, um, geese, who knows. And these are items that you would take to the tabernacle or to the temple. And you would have your gift prepared and set aside. And then you go to whomever that you were looking for with reconciliation and ask them to be reconciled. Ask them to for, ask the person or persons to be forgiven. And once you've done that, whether they forgave you or not, um, you can still go and take your, you know, go back to the tabernacle temple, take your offering and offer it up to God and leave it on the tabernacle or give it to whatever priest takes it to be offered up or whatever. That right there is something that has been happening long before Christianity, long before, probably about the same time the Hebrews were coming out of Egypt or, or whenever their religion was established. Other cultures from around Europe were doing basically the same thing. They were offering up their gifts, all their sacrifices to the gods for whatever reason, whether they've asked for reconciliation, whether they're looking for a, another good year of harvest, maybe they're looking for good, uh, you know, good spirits or whatnot for, you know, for going off raiding, whatever it was. The only difference was, is, you know, most of the offerings by the pagan culture were not always blood sacrifices, but they were sacrifices of one form or another. And yeah, blood sacrifices were one of them, um, mostly animal. Modern day, you know, the, the modern day method of doing the offering up your gift or whatnot to, to God at the temple or, you know, a lot of people like Christians 
most Christians, it's, it's about the tithe. How much can we give this time around for the tithe? Well, according to the information I was told, a tithe is supposed to be 10% of your overall incoming, income. Um, as for the Jewish people, I don't know if they still do the, you know, bring a gift and let the, uh, the rabbi deal with it. I know they have a, their particular holidays where they bring food to the rabbi and they're supposed to, the rabbi is supposed to bless it and, um, I don't know if they give anything to the rabbi or if they take it all home for their meal of the day during that particular holiday. I can't remember which one it was. Uh, I just learned about it in New York, and I just kind of went, okay, sure, you know. Just like I was told that what makes kosher food kosher is that kosher food has been blessed, or the facility that the kosher food is made in has been blessed by a rabbi. Because I was like, the food is blessed by a rabbi, but food is being constantly made. So is there like a rabbi standing somewhere in the facility blessing the food as it goes by on a, on a conveyor belt? Or is it the building itself is being has been blessed by a rabbi? I don't know. I still don't know. It'd be an interesting thing to find out, though. But, um... I think the the thing with Christians is so many Christians have gotten it in their mind that if um, they do what Jesus did and and converted people to Christianity, that that is one of their um, uh, trying to think of, of what to say. Um, their, their get out of jail free card, you know, type ordeal. But, um, to me, being a Christian isn't just about talking to people who look like they need the talking, um, of the kingdom of heaven, but it's also one of those things where it's, your life, your, your, you know, your lifestyle. And no, I don't mean living in a luxurious mansion, having three cars. Um, no, I mean, what was one of the, par what was one of the things I heard in the Bible? Um, the make of the earth will inherit I don't remember exactly what the, the, the passage is, but I believe that even the poorest of man, the, I mean, the people that most people would turn their nose up to because he's scruffy, he's he's dirty, everything, I mean, it looks like he hasn't washed his clothes or himself in weeks. Um, basically living off of what meager supplies he can get, whether he can get a free meal or panhandle for some, uh, just enough money to get a cup of coffee or something like that. I feel for those people because they have nothing. They literally have nothing but what they can carry, whatever's on their back. They have no home, no electricity, no adequate amount of food or water or anything like that. And most of them, some of them will not go to, um, shelter or anything like that unless it's for a free meal because you don't know what you know you don't know what you're going to be missing in the morning time i mean you wake up and somebody's walked off with your life because it was stuffed in a backpack a backpack underneath the cot you were sleeping on and somebody was able to take it um i understand those things i've never i've never had to live like like that and i hope to god i never do but I, I understand that stuff. I mean, people get desperate and they go, oh, what's in the bag? Maybe he's got something worthwhile. Who knows? 
But the thing is, a lot of those people, the only thing they have is their faith in God and the clothing on their backs. And yet, somehow, they're surviving. They're thriving better than most people who live in the six-digit McMansion. You know, I've said time and time again before, and this is before I did YouTube, and my wife and I used to joke about playing the lottery and every so often playing the, playing the lottery mostly for her father. And I kept on saying, you know what? Whether I win a lottery drawing that pays off all my bills or a lottery drawing that gives me the ability to build my my dream. I will always try my best to give back. You know, because it's like me and Jerry now, we get enough money to provide for our needs. But we don't get a lot of extra. We don't have a lot of extra money. Yet, we're willing to give whatever we can to those who, uh, that you know, to Jerry's two besties because you know they're always having hard times well i shouldn't say always but they're they they get hey they loaned us money you know when we fell on hard times after hurricane sandy they were they loaned us money you know we do it in return i mean oh you need you know you need $100, $50 until Friday, okay. Um, is it Friday this week or next week? Okay, next week? No, no whatever, whatever. Have your, you know, here, here's uh, here's what you need or you're asking for. Just, you know, they're good for it. They pay us back in one way, shape, or form. And I think that's the way the world should revolve. I think the world should be like, oh, you're down on your luck, but you're going to pay me, you know, I wouldn't say, but you're going to pay me back. I'm like, oh, you're down on your luck? All right, here. Here's a little bit of money. Get yourself a sandwich. Get yourself a burger. Um, you know, get yourself a meal. I have no problem with doing that. Um, everybody, I mean, I, I think that's the main purpose God wanted us to do is, you know, help each other out. Don't. Don't just sit there and go, oh, go get a job. No. No. Some of these people I see, they can't get a job. They're too. They're either too old or too broken to get a job. I've been told time and time again by people who know me that I could quit working and get SSI just because of my, my psychological problems. Or my mental issue, my mental health. And I'm like, no. I know what my mental problems are and I know what I need to do to work with them. I do it every day. I've been doing it every day since I was born. Or at least every day since I went started school. I mean, I see way too many people who say that they're Christian, but they don't act it. No. And the reason why they don't act it is because they're either too busy running around trying to stick a label on anybody they can, or they're too busy sitting off their sideline doing nothing but polishing their armor. That's not that's not being a Christian. No. That's not that that no. I don't think that's being Christian. Because your armor, you know how you polish that? You get off your butt and you do things for other people. You act and live like a Christian should act according to the way Jesus was. I remember in the early 90s, maybe even earlier than that, maybe late 80s, early 90s, they used to have bracelets. And they were rubber, rubber bracelets or bead uh, or a bracelet with three, or not three, but four little beads on there. You know, square beads. And it was simply WWJD. What would Jesus do? 
That was something that was taught to me, especially when I went to other Christian college. It was one of those things where it dawned on me that it's not about me. It's not about mom. It's not about Jerry. It's about all of us. Not just one individual person. Oh yeah, Jesus was an individual person, but he had his apostles. He had those around him that understood what he was doing and wanted to be a part of it. They felt the energy vibrating off of Jesus because of his extreme positivity. Not just because he was the son of God, but because of his extreme positive energy. The energy that the devil himself was afraid of and tried three different times to tempt Jesus to work with him and not his father. Jesus was tempted three times and every time he was tempted, he said no. We need to literally learn to sit back and go, what would Jesus do in a, any instance, any, anything that happens? What would Jesus do? You're in a car wreck. What would Jesus do? Well, hopefully if you're not like being rushed to the hospital, you can make sure the other people are okay. Make sure that, you know, it's not a, a an emergency situation where you might have to pull somebody from a vehicle because it's burning. Still, ask yourself, what would Jesus do? Would he just sit there and hold his head knowing that the rest of him is fine, but you, you, he smacked his head on the steering wheel or smacked his head on something? Would you, th would, do you think Jesus would sit there and wait for EMT, PD, Fire department? No. I am pretty sure that if Jesus was a normal person and could get up and do and move around, he would get up and try to find out if there's anybody who needs his attention right there and then not wait for somebody. You know a lot of people are going, but but there's so many people suing other people for just that thing right there, for helping them out. Because they weren't a professional. I'm sorry. I'm trying to help save your life. You want to sue me for that? That's fine and dandy. But you know what? I'm going to make damn sure that the courts are going to understand what was happening at that time. And I made a religious decision on what would Jesus do. I made a decision because of Jesus. I know this much, if I had the education in veterinary and science that I wanted and had a big enough property, I'd be a private vet. Either that or I'd be one of these people who are like, I don't want to deal with somebody else's animals, but I'll take rescues. I'll take orphans. I'll, I'll call me up. Hey, yeah, we see this bird of prey on the side of the road, but it looks like his wing was damaged. What should I do? Tell me where you are. I'll come out there and I'll, I'll deal with it. The problem with people is they're so busy trying to satisfy themselves. And I'm one of those people because that's the way I used to be. I still kind of am from time to time. But most people are too busy worrying about themselves and not the world around them. Not what we were intended to do. We weren't intended to run around with these crazy jobs. We weren't intended to dig giant holes in the ground or drill for, you know, this liquid that, that, you know, helps make gasoline and oil and, and just stuff that's nasty and yucky and pollutant and the whole nine yards. I mean, I'm not saying that we should have been stuck in the Stone Age, but it's just like, I think we could have, if we had worked together as a species done a whole lot better than what we're doing now as corporations.
But anyhow, I'm going to end this video there, and I may create another one for a different time. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, um, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. <clears throat> Any questions or comments on this particular material, go ahead and put your comment in there. If you have not joined and choose to, for whatever hopeful positive reason, um, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And once you do that, you will have a little bell you can click on. And once you click on that, you will t YouTube will let you know when I'm done. Alright, have a new video. Until next time, you guys have a good day. Bye.